tutorial. This is the January 2017 edit cell exam paper. And uh, we're going to be doing the questions, and hopefully this should help you in completing your own exam. So it starts off, you open responses, and you fill out your personal details. This task is all about you going online and finding the information that they want. And obviously you have to evidence this. So there are a range of things that you have to do. Firstly, you've got to look for the items that they ask you to look for. Go on the internet to do this. And your job here really is to take a screenshot of the search engine as well as give the information they've asked for and reference where it's come from. In referencing where it's come from, it's important that you don't use anything like Google or Bing or any of those type of derivatives. It has to be the actual website. So at the moment you can see I've got the information that's been asked for. Now I'm actually moving on to taking the screenshot. There you go. The final part is just reference, and I'm using the actual website where the information was found. And I paste that in. Hey, Presto. Really important that you paste the actual website because the examiner may go on it themselves and have a look. So we're going to move on to task two just now. So this is the spreadsheet task. It is always a spreadsheet task. So firstly, it's inputting data. You don't have to use formulas and in some circumstances use a few functions like sum and average. So to find the next part, which is the total income, I'm going to be multiplying the selling price and the number of sets. So 300 was sold for 5.99, B4 times B5. And we'll use the drag handle function, bring it across to apply it to the other sets. Looking at the total cost, we can use a sum function here. This would be the appropriate way to do this task and not to add the cells individually. You wouldn't gain as many marks if you were to add the cells individually. And again, we use our drag handle function, bringing it across. And lastly, we're going to work out our profit. So that's the total income subtracted from the total cost. Easy enough. And use our drag handle again. So this next bit, we're asked to format the currency. So this is obviously anything that's money. So we're going to highlight the appropriate cells. We can use control to highlight multiple cells. Now I've brought it to currency. I'm going to extend my cell length. As you can see, that goes to the second part of uh, question E which is any other formatting that makes the spreadsheet easy to use. So what I'm doing, I'm adding uh, some bolding and also the borders so it can be clearly seen. It's up to you how you do this. But what I would say, the bare minimum is what I've done just here. Adding the borders and some bolding. If you so wish, you can add color. But that, of course, will take time, and it's entirely up to you. The exam is actually two hours long, and uh, my view is that it shouldn't take that long. I've just made a mistake there. Sort that out. Make sure that you're actually using the selection tool, and then not, for instance, the target tool, as I have just done there. adding the last borders and to me that looks pretty good okay so the next part I want us to create a chart so you need to choose the appropriate area 
which is A9 to D13. And then we're going to go to insert. And we're looking for a column chart. What we're going to do is move the chart to a separate sheet as you're instructed to do so in the instructions pack. And the next thing we need to consider is titles. Axis titles and the chart title it must be present. In order to select a good chart title, you just take what's given to you in the question. So this one says the five costs for each number of sets. Create a chart to display the five costs for each number of sets. So that's what I'm doing. It's you know you can choose whatever title you want, but by using the question, you're going to gain the full marks. And then you choose an appropriate title for your y-axis. You could use the header or that column or row, depending on what you've been asked in the question. So this is obviously the cost, the five costs for each number of sets. And then obviously we have our x-axis, which is the items that are being sold. This creates a bit of a headache here. We're going to format the legends. Dependent on the type of chart you have, you may or may not need to do this, but Series 1, Series 2, Series 3 means nothing to us, so we need to change that to what's appropriate. And in this case, it's set 1 for the blue items. Instead of Series 2, we'll edit that to be set 2 for the red items. And obviously, Series 3. We will edit that to be set of three. Something that uh, Excel does automatically, but not in all cases. This is quite rare. Now we're moving on to the third task, and this is us creating the recipe card. So first of all, set up your sheet how you expect it to look. They've told you front and back must be side and side by side on one A4 landscape. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it landscape. I'm also adding a border. You get an additional mark for this. So things like page borders, bullets, and effective use of tables and so forth. So that's it side by side. Let's go for columns. Then we'll begin by copying and pasting the data. We've had a read through to make sure that all of that data is um, prerequisite and it doesn't have any red herrings in it. Sometimes they'll put a red herring. In this case, it says the text, and some others it says the appropriate text. So it starts to make it look like a publication. So we're going to bold our titles. You can of course do any other thing you wish to do. Just want to check out the uh, paragraph setting, making sure that it is single lined. tricky with that any time for it take it looks slightly off. Anyway, let's continue. We get rid of any information that's not necessary. And then our recipe card starts to take shape. And to enter the information we found in section A task one, which was the weight of a large acre. Brilliant. Put that in. Now we're going to get our images. We need to copy and paste the images. I've actually got it set up on a viewing 
which is extra large icons, so I can actually see what's involved in the picture. I suggest you do the same. And we'll paste those in. There we have it. Just need to make some adjustments. And we're going to work with text wrapping. This means that we're able to manoeuvre and manipulate where the image shall be positioned. Try and keep your images the same size as each other and definitely make sure that you haven't skewed it. So you drag the size with the corners. We're going to try it out on our logo that we were asked to use. There we go, you see? It maintains our proportions. And we've kept it the same first by purely copying and pasting. We're almost done. A few more things to consider. The second part of task three. This asks a question about producing a document that doesn't or isn't able to be changed. I've given my reasons there to be responsive. That's about that. And then we're going to move on to the next task, which is the email task. We need to use Outlook. or any other offline email. Don't use things like Hotmail, don't use things like Gmail, you should not be accessing an internet browser to complete this task. So effectively, set like you're writing an email, put in the appropriate subject. So this will usually be based on what's involved in the question and what you've titled your attachment. There is an attachment. The question actually asks us to send the email to the finance manager and attach a copy of the spreadsheet, asking them to confirm that they're happy with the cost. Another thing I put there, Brian, keep it formal. No, hi, what's up, how you doing? Okay, I think that about wraps it up. Put a salutation, that makes sense. So time regards, regards, etc. And attach the necessary document that you're asked to attach. Okay. Screenshot that. And obviously paste it in the necessary document so this could be a word file and the last one asks you to put those documents in the folder <laughs>